Assalamu alaikum. This is a microeconomics theory course directed to force year economics section. Let's continue the optimization behavior of the producer in the short run. The aim of any producer is to maximize his profit. In a short run, we have only one variable factor of production, which is labor. Capital is fixed. Here, output is governed by the law of diminishing return. Hence, optimization behavior in the short run is referred to the second stage of production process. Here in second stage, where it starts at this point, when the average product of labor reaches its maximum, and the stage ends where marginal product of labor becomes zero. In terms of labor use, this is identified as the range of labor use from L2 to L3. In order to maximize profits, as you know, profits equal total revenue minus total cost. So we have to learn first costs in short run. Let's review costs in short run. In the short run, costs are function of output, and output is a function of labor, which is the only variable factor of production, and capital is constant. In order to know the total cost of function in short run, we have to put some assumption. First of all, we have only two inputs, labor and capital. Labor is the only variable factor of production, capital is constant, and the price of labor, which is wages, price of capital, which is rents, are constant. Based on this assumption, total cost, which is the cost of producing any given level of output, consists of total variable cost, which is a part of total cost, that is, it changes when output level it changes, and total fixed cost, which is a part of total cost that is that does not relate to the level of output. It is constant or fixed, whatever the level of output is. Total cost equals total variable cost, which is the size of labor times the price of labor, and total fixed cost, which is the amount of capital times the price of capital. As we assumed, Price of labor and price of capital are constant. Graphically, the shape of total cost and total variable cost reflects the law of diminishing return in short run. First of all, total fixed cost is represented by a horizontal line because it is a part of total cost that does not relate to the level of output. Total variable cost starts from the origin the shape of total cost curve and total variable cost curves is the inverse of the shape of total product curve. According to the law of diminishing return, as we add more and more of the variable inputs, which is the labor, total product passes through three stages. First, it increases at increasing rate. Total cost increases at decreasing rate. In the second stage, as we add more labor, total product increase at decreasing rate and total cost increase at increasing rate. Finally, as we add more labor, total product decrease and total cost increase. Here we have to notice that the vertical distance between total cost and total variable cost curves is constant. Why it is constant? Because it reflects the total fixed cost, which is fixed or constant, whatever the level of output is. Mathematically, total cost function can be represented as follows, where the intercepts reflect the total fixed cost and total variable cost represented by cubic polynomial form. Concerning the average costs in the short run, 
First of all, in order to get average fixed cost, we divided total fixed cost by the level of output. As we know, total fixed cost is constant, whatever the level of output is. And as output level increase, average fixed cost decreases, but never reaches zero. Graphically, it takes the shape of rectangle hyperbola, which indicates that the area under the curve are equals. The short run average variable cost, it is a variable cost per unit of output, and it is measured as this formula. It equals total variable cost divided by total product. From above, the total variable costs can be expressed as a cubic polynomial, as we have said before. From this, the average variable cost drives its U shape as it becomes as follows. We divide total variable costs by the level of output in order to get the average variable costs, and it takes U shape. Actually, the shape of average variable cost is the inverse of the shape of average product of labor. According to the law of diminishing return, average product of labor increase till reach its maximum, average variable cost decreases till reach its minimum. When average product of labor decrease, the average variable cost increase. Short run marginal costs. It is the rate of change in total cost as a result of change in output by one unit. How can we get marginal cost? We get the first derivative of total variable cost or total cost with respect to the level of output. This is the total variable cost, which takes the cubic polynomial form. We get the first derivative of total variable costs with respect to output in order to get the marginal cost to the rate of a change in total cost as a result of change in output by one unit. Basically, marginal cost is the slope of total variable cost curves. It is measured by the tangent drawn to the points on the total variable cost curve. It is measured by the tangent drawn to the points A, B, C, D, G, H. Okay, it's observed from the graph that the successive tangent drawn to the total variable cost curve declined in slope from point A to point B. This indicates that the marginal cost curve is falling. So, marginal cost is reflected by the tangent to points on total variable cost. As the tangent decreased, it means that the slope decreased, so the marginal cost curve first decreases. Point C is a point of inflection. At point C, the slope of successive tangents stop declining and start to increase, which makes the minimum point of the marginal cost curve, after which the curves increase or rises. Okay, so at point A, we draw a tangent at point A and draw a tangent to point B. We note that the slope at point EB is less than that at point A, which indicates that the marginal cost curve is falling. At point C, it is an inflection point. The slope of the tangent stops declining and starts to increase, which indicates that the marginal cost curve reached its minimum point. At point D, the slope of the tangent equals the ray from the origin to point D, which indicates that at this point, the average variable cost and the marginal cost are one. 
the same. They are the same. And we notice that the average variable cost reach its minimum at point D and in at such a point it equals marginal cost. So marginal cost and average variable cost takes U shape. Marginal cost is measured by the tangent drawn to points on total variable cost. The tangent first decreases, then it stop decreases on point C and start to increase. So the marginal cost curve, first of all, it's falling to reach its minimum and start to increase. Average variable costs reach its minimum and at such a point it equals marginal cost. So the marginal cost curve intersect average variable cost when average variable cost reach its minimum. Okay, both of them takes U shape, marginal cost curve reach its minimum first and average variable cost reach its minimum after that. Putting all our curves together help a producer to understand relationship between marginal cost and average cost curves. First of all, marginal cost cuts the average variable cost and average total cost curves at their minimum point. We have to know that the minimum point of the short-run average variable cost curves is the point of the optimal combination of inputs. When the cost or the marginal cost equals the average variable cost, it means that the producer has great opportunity to become cost competitive in the short run with the existing plan. When the marginal cost of expanding output is less than the average cost of production, then the optimal combination of inputs hasn't reached yet and the plant is being underutilized. Why? Because unit costs are higher than they could be for that plant size. In order to be competitive, the producer has to move to a larger plant size or larger scale plant and this movement has to take place in the long run because in the short run we are restricted by fixed capital. Also when the marginal cost of expanding output is greater than the average cost, the producer should rely that the plant size being overutilized. Okay, in this case the producer has to move to smaller scale plant. Also, this movement has to take place in the long run. So, when the short run average variable costs reach its minimum to the point of the optimal combination of inputs. We call it also designed capacity of the plants. Why? Because it provides the lowest unit cost of operation once the plant is established. So, at the point where the average variable cost reach its minimum, the producer become cost competitive in the short run with the existing plants. Let's solve an example. Consider the following cost function. C equal 100 plus 10Q plus Q squared required. What is the type of this function? Why? What are the formula for the fixed cost, variable cost, average cost, and marginal cost? At what output level is average cost lowest? What is the minimum average cost? This cost Function is uh, the cost of function in short run. Why? Because it consists of uh, total fixed cost and total variable cost. Uh, how can I know that I have uh, fixed cost? Because we have constant in this uh, function. Um, it is a part of total cost that does not relate to the level of output. So, fixed cost equals 100. Variable cost equals the rest of the total cost. 
average cost is got by dividing the total cost by the level of output. Marginal cost equal the change in total cost over the change in output produced. Number three, he wants or he asked to find the quantity of output at which the average cost reach its minimum or lowest. One way to solve this is to find the quantity at which average cost equal marginal cost. First we get average cost and equate it with marginal cost. In order to get the level of output at which the average cost reach its minimum point, which is 10 units. Turn to the mathematical derivation of short-run equilibrium. First of all, we have to get the first order condition where the objective function of the producer is to maximize the profit. The profit equals total revenue minus total cost, where total revenue equals the price time quantity produced. Quantity produced is a function of labor, which is the only variable factor of production, and the capital, which is taxed in short run. With capital is faxed, the cost equation, which is a constraint, equals total variable cost and total fixed cost. As we have said before, the prices of factors of production are constant, so we can rewrite the constraints as follows. So the producer aims to maximize his profit subject to the constraint of costs. By disaggregating total cost, the objective function can be written as follows. And in order for the firm to maximize its profit, it has to get the number of labor that maximize the profit level. In order to get so, we have to differentiate the profit function with respect to labor only and to equate this to zero. We have to notice that this part represents a marginal productivity of labor. So, the profit maximization condition can be written as follows, which is the value of marginal product of labor must equal the wage rate in order for the firm to maximize its profit, or in other words, the marginal product of labor, which is the benefits of getting or of hiring one more unit of labor equals the real wages, which is the cost of hiring additional units of labor. So in order for the firm to maximize its profit, the marginal product of labor must equal the real wages or the value of marginal product of labor must equal nominal wage rate. We call the first order condition for the firm to maximize profit as a necessary condition for profit maximization. In order to um, make sure that we maximize profit or not, we have to get the second order condition for profit maximization. We call it sufficient condition. We have now uh, to make sure that the slope of marginal product of labor must be negative. Okay, the slope of the marginal product of labor must be negative in order to make sure that we reach maximum. Let's take our second assignment. Solve this assignment and send the answer to me for evaluation. Consider the following short-run production function, and if in short-run capital is fixed at 100 hours per week, the required. First, if capital rent equals $10, Wages equals $5. What is a short-run total cost? Short-run average total cost and marginal cost functions. Second, what is the quantity of output that maximizes profits? Third, what is the number of labor hours that maximize profits?